As DJs, our music collection is at the heart and soul of what we do. And regardless of the gear we use, a successful event really boils down to music and programming. Now in the age of digital music and with how inexpensive music storage has become, DJs as a result have developed these colossal music databases that are difficult to manage and navigate. In addition, DJs feel the added pressure to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak, because our clients have unlimited access to their music at the touch of their fingertips through popular streaming apps like Spotify and YouTube. This makes DJs feel that they have to have everything under the sun in order to have a successful event. This means now more than ever that DJs are turning to technology to help them be more efficient and creative with these large libraries. Now, Virtual DJ is a pioneer in this arena and has one of the most sophisticated and robust music management systems that I've ever seen. So today, we're going to take a broad look at the program and some of the features that are available to help you get more organized, correct some of those metadata issues, and ultimately make you a better DJ by knowing what to play and where to find it. So let's dive on in. To make this a little easier, we're going to use the browser zoom view. Now, Virtual DJ gives us several options to organize our music within the program. The focus of this video is on filter folders, but it's worth mentioning the other options just so we understand the differences and what we're looking at. Now, Virtual DJ has three music management options, and those are favorites, virtual, and filter folders, and each one serves a different purpose. To get started, let's look at the favorites folder, which is this one here in yellow. Now, depending on how you have your music organized on your hard drive, finding a specific music folder may be a little cumbersome when navigating through the browser window. And this is where favorite folders can be extremely helpful. So let's just say I have a 90s and early 2000s party, and I don't wanna have to navigate through my hard drive to get to it every time. So I can simply come to local music, hard drive, Passport, then click on my music folder, then click on the folder where my 2000s and 90s music live, and then I can come down to the folder that I'm looking for, right click and put set as favorite. So now I only have to do that one time. So now I can access these favorite folders really easily without having to go through this navigation browser. Now if I don't use these folders a lot and I only needed it for one party, I can simply right click and then come to remove from favorites and they're gone. So you have complete flexibility in terms of what is over here in your browser window. Next, we're gonna take a look at virtual folders and these are the ones in red. Now they are amazing for staying super organized and I absolutely love them for private events and weddings where very specific songs need to be played and there's no room for error. Virtual folders allow you to drag and drop songs from your hard drive into a folder you create and it does not alter your database in any way. So let's take a look at an example here. To create a virtual folder, we're gonna come right over here to the left. It's gonna bring up a dialog box. So I have a Steve and Becky getting married at the Candlewood Inn on 5-5-2019. Now what I find really helpful is that their names are right here. So under the stress of the wedding, I can make sure that I'm calling them by the right name. I have the location and the date. So now I can start making nested folders under their main one based upon what I need to play. So if I make another virtual folder, I can call this first dance. And now I can find their specific first dance song. Let's just say it's Ed Sheeran Perfect, like everyone else in the whole entire world. And now this is the only song within this folder, so now there is little to no chance of me dragging up the wrong tune. Now we can make as many of these as we need. Let's just say we want one for their cake cutting and their dinner music. So this will keep you really organized and focused, playing only what you need to. Now once you're done with the event, if there's no other need for this virtual folder, you can right click the main one, select delete virtual folder, it will disappear and it will not change your hard drive in any way. Now we're gonna cover the basics of using filter folders for music management, and that's these blue ones right over here. Now the benefit to this is that it can save you a ton of time organizing and cleaning up your database, but before we can get into any of this, I first need to say that filter folders will only work as good as the tags you have. 
Now, if your tagged files are an absolute disaster, this really won't work since the system is going to use the tag info to pinpoint and sort through the files that you've told it to look for based upon the script that you've written. So in reality, the first step in using this feature is getting your tags right. Now, you can change a tag by coming to one of your songs, right-clicking it, opening up the tag editor. From here, you can add or change whatever you need to to make sure it's properly tagged. Then come down here, click right tag, click OK, and then now it's going to be ready for the filter folder feature. We will be creating our own filter folders in just a second, but Virtual DJ does come with some helpful and commonly used ones, which can save the DJ a little bit of time instead of having to set these up on their own. So genre is obviously going to show you different genres on your database based upon the tag. Recently added will show you your 50 most recent songs that you've added. Compatible songs is based on the songs you have in your deck. So for example, this track right here is 105 beats per minute. If I click on compatible songs, you can see that it's giving me songs within that range. So this can be helpful for DJs who might not be able to think of something on the fly, and this can give a decent suggestion. Then obviously we have things grouped by decades, again, based on the tag, our last played and most played tracks. Now to create our own folder, we can come over here to this icon, simply click it, and it's gonna bring up a dialog box where we can type in the type of folder we will be creating, or we can click on filters, and then right here in the center, click this, and it's gonna pull up that same dialog box. The first example I have to show you how filter folders are really helpful is I'm gonna create a Latin music folder. Now this is one genre that I have some difficulty with simply because there's so many genres and subgenres. And since I don't play it that much, I'm not really familiar with all the artists and styles that I even have available in my database. So this filter folder can really help me pinpoint exactly what I'm looking for, even if I don't know the specific artists. So here's how this would work. So I have a virtual folder made right here, and now I'm gonna create a filter folder, and I will call this salsa. So now when I click OK, it's going to open up a script box. Now in general, filters are little pieces of script that allow the software to pinpoint and group your music based upon what you tell it. Now I don't want to get too crazy here, this is only an introduction, but we're going to go over a few helpful examples. So specifically with this Latin music example, I'm going to put genre, then equals, and then now I can type in salsa. Now since I want to find all the salsa music located on my database, I have to come to scope. And scope is where you're telling the software to go find the music. So instead of leaving it at a local folder, I want it to search my whole entire database. So when I click this, it now has found all the salsa music that I have on my hard drive and it put it in this organized folder. Now there's some artists in here that I've never even heard of and that I didn't even know I had, but if I was doing a party and they were really into salsa music, I now have everything that I own right here in a nice consolidated location. It's amazing the amount of control we have with the available fields and operators. You can really pinpoint almost anything. So in the previous example, we were looking for salsa music, but we can also find Every song I own by Britney Spears, I can also pinpoint something down to the beats per minute. So let's just say I have an event and I want everything to be 115 beats per minute or higher. I can click BPM is it greater than or equal to. I will type in, let's just say 115. I will then search my database. And now I have a folder of all my music that is 115 beats per minute or higher. So you can get really specific and find exactly what you're looking for. And lastly, I want to show you how filter folders can help us correct some issues with our database. So I'm going to jump on over to the Virtual DJ website, and I highly recommend everyone coming here. Virtual DJ has been nice enough to pre-write some very simple scripts so that we don't have to figure it out, and they have given us some of the most popular and convenient pieces of script that we can use for filter folders. Now, I'm pretty sure they haven't included everything that you could possibly do, but they've given you a great selection. Now, what I'm mostly interested in is these database and tag management filters because these are what we can use to really clean up our database. So for example, let's just say I wanted to find all the tracks on my hard drive that have not been analyzed by the program. I can come over here and copy this piece of script, open up the piece of software, create a filter folder, and I will say that this is not analyzed. 
I will paste in this piece of script and then it's going to give me these results and this is every song on my hard drive that has not been analyzed. The last example is this display all missing files from search database and I'm only going over this because I find it so incredibly helpful. Sometimes files can go missing and get shuffled around and Virtual DJ doesn't know where to find them. Therefore, if you go to drag up one of these tracks, you're going to get an error. So this is going to show me all of my disconnected files that are no longer found by the software. So again, I right click, copy this, come back to the software, I will make another filter folder. I will call this missing. Now, if I paste this piece of script, it's going to give me all the files that the software currently cannot find. So if I go to drag this up to play it, I'm going to get this error because it's a broken file. So Virtual DJ will pinpoint these so I can either reconnect them or remove them from my database. I hope this introduction to the file management basics in Virtual DJ has shown you that we can really get a grip on our massive databases and ensure we're playing the best music during our sets every time. In my opinion, a DJ is only as good as the music they have and know how to use, and this starts with proper database management. Now, Virtual DJ has given us an incredible platform with many powerful tools to ensure that we are being our best and most creative. So hopefully today motivated you to get that metadata under control and really fine tune that database. As always, we thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like and share, and as always, happy mixing.